Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the vintage Photoshop action. So the way the action works is that you start off with a photo, you fill in your subject with a color, uh, you run the action and this is the vintage effect here. Okay, and in the second example I'm going to work with this photo and I'm going to take a little bit further, I'm going to add some background textures in and add some text. So let me just show you some more examples of the effect. So here was the photo, that was where I brushed and that was the result Okay, so I've got my photo open here in Photoshop and there's just a few things we need to go through to make sure your file is set up correctly and that you don't run into any problems when you play back the action. So firstly, look into your layer panel and your photo layer must look identical to this. It should say background and have this lock symbol there. So for those of you who have opened up a photo and it doesn't look like that, this is what you need to do. So I'm just gonna delete this background for a second. So say I've just opened up my photo, it's called layer one. What you need to do is go to layer, new background from layer, and that just sets it correctly as the background. You cannot just rename the layer background. Uh, it must be set correctly through that method there. Okay, so uh, still in the layer panel, uh, I'm just gonna detach my layer panel for a second. So if you go to this top right hand corner icon in the layer panel, click on that and go down to panel options. And right down the bottom here, just make sure add Copy to copy layers and groups is ticked. Click OK. It's going to drag this back. Okay. Next, go to image mode. Just ensure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits channel is selected. And if you go to image size, just check the resolution of your photo. Uh, I'm working with a high resolution photo here. You can see uh, the size here. Uh, but a good range for this action is anywhere between 1500 pixels all up to about 6000 pixels. Okay. So, click OK there. Uh, next, what we need to do is load up the Actions panel. So, go to Window, Actions. It'll pop up here. Click on this icon. Go to Load Actions. Select the vintage.atn file that was included in the download. It'll pop up there. Uh, I'll close that Actions panel for a second. We'll come back to that. Uh, actually, I'll just leave it open. Uh, next, what you need to do is hit B on the keyboard and right click anywhere over your photo and that just brings up the brushes. So what we need to do here is replace um, your existing brushes that are in the brushes panel with the ones included in the download. So yeah, right click and then go to this uh, icon here. Go to load brushes and select the vintage underscore brushes dot ABR file. And I'll appear here. But what I need to do is actually replace these brushes. So I've, I've accidentally clicked on load, so I've got to replace and that'll just replace the existing brushes with the vintage ones, okay? So it's very important when jumping around from action to action is to replace all the brushes that are in your brushes panel with the one uh, that you're working with, okay? Now a very important thing to remember before you run the action is that your brush opacity here is set to 100%. So just uh, with the brush tool out, okay? Uh, hit B, just scroll up to the top here and make sure that is at 100%. If it's say set to say 50%, then the effects are going to appear very faint, okay, and you won't get the uh, the true result of the action. So just hit zero on the keyboard or drag that to 100%. So now what we need to do is fill in our subject with a color, okay, and that must be done on a new layer. So what I'm going to do first is create a new layer. So go to layer, new layer, and this layer must be called brush, all in lowercase letters. The action will not work at all if that is not spelled correctly or if there is an uppercase letter. So click OK. So now what I need to do is make a selection around my subject and the selection doesn't need to be perfect for this action um, because the effect is quite grungy. 
I uh, don't need to focus too much on making a perfect selection. So I'm just going to select my background layer. I'm going to hit W to grab my uh, Magic Wand tool out. And I've set my tolerance to about 22. And I'm just going to start clicking around my photo, holding down Shift to increase the selection. Okay, um, just top corner here. Now if I select my brush layer, and I fill in that selection with a color. So to fill in a selection with the foreground color, you hold down Alt Backspace or Option Backspace. So you can see that's filled in everywhere apart from my subject. So I need to invert this selection. So Control Shift I or Command Shift I, that'll invert the selection. Now if I fill in my subject with a the color, there it is there. Okay, and uh, I might just fix up this hair a little bit. So I'm just going to undo that. So uh, Control Alt Z or Command Option Z to undo that. And I'm just going to do this again. I'm going to select my subject. And I'm going to go Invert, so Control Shift I, Command Shift I. Now I'm going to go to Select Refine Edge. Okay, and what I'm going to do is start just brushing around the edges of the hair here. And Photoshop will try to um, erase uh, some of that background color whilst keeping in um, a lot of detail with the hair. So I'm just going to brush around here and down through here. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to click OK. Okay, so you can see it's adjusted that selection. So I'm going to select my background layer and fill in that selection now. Alright, now I'm just going to grab my pen tool just to fix up this side a little bit. So I'm just going to hit P on the keyboard and uh, I'm just going to quickly just uh, draw around the edges here, down through here. And I'm just going to fill that in black. Okay, so I've got my brush layer there. I've filled in my subject with the color. Um, you don't need to be that accurate with the hair. I was just showing you a quick technique to um, mask away some of those background details. Um, just gonna get rid of that bit there. So now uh, we're all ready to go. So just uh, load up the actions panel again. If you twirl open the vintage folder, the actions are inside here. Okay, you don't want to run this one yet. Oil paint uh, finish. Uh, that's to be run after you've run the vintage action and it's, this is an optional one. So if you twirl open the vintage action, you'll get a scroll bar here and that just reveals all the steps uh, of the action. And also gives you an idea of how much time the action's got to play back. So when I click play, uh, the scroll bar will go down and yeah, it'll let you know how much time's left. But this action will take between one to two minutes, so not too long. Um, so I'm just going to click play. And I'm just going to skip forward and get to the result. All right, the action is finished playing back and you can see the result that I got. So I'm just going to close the actions panel and we'll jump into the layer panel now. So first thing you want to do, and this is the same with all my actions, is collapse all the folders that are open when the actions just finished playing back. Okay, so to do that, the vintage folder will already be selected. So just hold down Control, Alt or Command Option on a Mac and click on this folder arrow. Then when you twirl open the folder again, all the folders are, are collapsed. Alright, so I've kept the brush layer on at the top here. So if you want to run the action again, you just delete the vintage folder. And then um, if you want, you can adjust your, where you've brushed, um, you know, make some changes there. So let's now, uh, and another thing to notice, every time you run the action, the result is going to be uh, different. So the arrangement of these textures, they're all randomized. So if you want to, say, um, run the action a few times and see what different results you get, just save out each result as a different Photoshop file and then maybe just compare them at the end and see which one you want to work with. Okay, so the first layer you want to jump to uh, when the action's finished is this one down the bottom here. It's called a Reveal Normal Photo in brackets brush mask. You'll notice that um, the texture does cut into your subject in random places. It's just to help to build the overall look of the um, effect but sometimes the texture will cut in too far into your subject's face or um, it might completely chop your subject's head off. So to, to bring it back, all you need to do is select the mask of this layer, grab a white brush, I'll just hit B, right click, and I'll just grab this soft brush. And if you start brushing white into this layer, into this layer mask, sorry, 
all that's doing is bringing back our original photo okay so you can see a perfect example is the dress down the bottom here how it's disappeared into all the textures what I could do is just start brushing and it will reveal that okay and if you want to um, use a textured brush all you need to do is I'm just going to undo whoops undo that and if I just hit B right click and you can use this brush on the end here that's a charcoal brush and just like the mask and start brushing white so that way you brush in uh, with a textured brush rather than just a soft brush okay I'm um, just going to undo that all right, so let's jump back up to the top here. Uh, this layer here, black and white, very simple. If you turn it on, convert your design to black and white. Overall saturation, if you double click on this, you can play around with the um, color saturation in your design. You can also use this hue slider here to quickly change the color, okay? This folder here, color options, if you twirl that open, I've just created 16 preset color options for you to play around with. Uh, and the way these work is if you just turn on the, the eye for this for these folders, it will apply a different uh, set of colors. All right. And you can, of course, apply more than one. So I could turn on 14, I could turn on one, or just go down here and just experiment with uh, mixing colors. You can also adjust the opacity of these folders as well. So say uh, for color option 14, I didn't want it at 100% opacity, I could just drag that down or just hit 5 on the keyboard, that'll change to 50%. Maybe with color option 3, I just want to use 20%, so I just hit 2 on the keyboard. And yeah, you can start, you can just keep building up um, different colors that way. I don't mind option 14, so I'm just going to leave that on about 60%. Okay. Uh, this layer here, Adjust Contrast, I've got in brackets here, Opacity. So whenever I've got a layer or a folder um, where I've got in brackets Opacity, I'm just telling you to uh, play around with this layer through its Opacity. So currently it's at 20%. So if I drag it to 100%, you can see how it's just adding some contrast. So you can play around with that. Uh, adjust Brightness, you can click on this layer and play around with these handles here. Okay, that'll adjust the brightness. Grab this midpoint handle. And also this one here. Okay. Um, edge texture burn. If I turn this on and off, you can see it's very subtle, but it adds just a burn around uh, the edges of your photo. If you double click on this layer <coughs> and uh, go down to Integrow, so this is where the effect is created. So if I turn it on and off, you can see that there. So there's some things you can play around with here. You can adjust this range slider here and the burn will cut in further into your design. You can adjust the opacity, make that stronger. Okay, so we'll turn that up a little bit. Um, you can also play around with the blend modes as well. And also this contour handle here. You can adjust that. Okay. So this layer here, uh, reveal original color in brackets opacity. So if I turn it on and off, it does nothing. It's because its opacity is at zero. So if you want to bring back some of the original color from your photo into this design, <coughs> all you need to do is um, just bring up the opacity a little bit, okay? And you don't want to bring it to 100% because it will not look that great. You want to keep it at a low opacity. So if I just hit two on the keyboard, then I'll just hit three, Four, you can see the color coming up, five, six. So generally when I do apply a bit of color here, I keep it very low, usually about 20 or 30%. So just get a little bit of hint, a little hint of color uh, coming through. Okay, this layer here, um, by default, I've got it turned off. If you want to increase the detail or bring a bit more detail into your photo, just turn this on. So you can see as I turn it on and off, um, you get a lot more shadow detail coming through. Also be aware that the opacity of this layer is at 50%. So if I turn this to 100%, um, and I'll just drag it from 0 to 100, you can see the effect is a lot more dramatic. Okay. Let's see a little bit here. Now this folder, edge lines, 
if you go on, if I turn this on and off, you can see what's going on in there. If you turn it off, you get a pretty cool effect um, on its own, okay? Um, but you can see that it removes a lot of line detail from the subject's face, so, um, and a little trick you can do here, say if I turn this off and I'm thinking, okay, that boat looks heaps better without the lines, but obviously I need some lines back in the subject's face, you just use the mask. I put masks on every single layer and folder, it's because that way you can control its visibility. So if I just select this mask, and if I hit Control or Command I to invert it, that'll flip it to black, so everything's hidden. So white is visible, black is hidden. Now if I just grab my brush, hit B, and I'll right click, I'll use my soft brush. Make sure white is my active color. If I start brushing now white um, over the face, you can see it brings back all the line detail, but not down here. So you can really control the line work that way. But I'm just going to hide this mask for a second to talk about what's inside this folder. So if you twirl that open, we've got three different uh, layers here. <coughs> so I'll turn them off and we'll go down one by one. So this one at the bottom here, black edge lines. Again, I've got in brackets a passive. So if I turn it on, you can see that that will reveal all the black edges, all the dark details in your subject. And again, look at the opacity at 50%. You can turn it up to 100 Okay, so adjust that to whatever level you want. This one here, white edge lines. Again, in practice of passive, if I turn it on, that will bring in the highlights, okay, um, of your subject. And again, if it's too strong, lower the opacity. You can also experiment with blend mode, so currently that's at normal. Um, turn it to overlay, it can sometimes look pretty cool. Okay, but I think I'm going to use normal and just lower this down a little bit. Now this one here, by default it's turned off. Uh, it's white edge lines large. Okay, so if I turn that on, you can see that will uh, look for uh, contours in your photo and apply uh, a large white. If I move this layer around, you can see that there it applies um, your large white Lines. So sometimes, you know, you'll turn that on, you think it looks pretty good, and you might not need the the thinner white edge lines, or even the black edge lines, okay? So it's just an experiment with which combination works best um, for your photo. And don't forget, you can also control it again with masks, okay? So say if I only wanted these white highlights in the hair, I could again invert that mask, Grab my brush, make sure white is my active color, and brush just over the hair, okay? But, oh, I'll just use a little bit, just a little bit um, of that layer. Okay, so this folder here, uh, photo sketch textures, if I turn it off, it basically will hide your entire subject. So this is where um, a lot of your subject, or your entire subject visibility is created. Okay, so we'll go into here and there are a bunch of different layers. So I'll turn these all off one by, uh, sorry, turn them all off and go up one by one. So down the bottom here we've got black texture 3. So I'm just going to turn off these lines for a sec. And uh, yeah, so if you turn that on, you can see you get a very subtle, um, very subtle look to your photo there. And if you turn on black texture 2, it'll start to bring in more detail. Uh, black texture 3, again more detail. And then you've got your white textures. So the white textures will only appear in the highlights of your subject, okay? And a little bit on the outside as well. And then you've got white texture 1. Again, we'll look for the highlights in your subject and fill that in with the texture. Okay, very simple. So again, um, just experiment with you know turning these on and off. Sometimes it looks great, you know, hiding some of these layers. So I think that looks pretty cool. Just turn that one off. Um, you know, you might not want the whites, okay? So just experiment. Uh, we've gone over that one. Uh, background textures. If I turn this off, you'll see that it hides all the background textures, and all you're left with is these two uh, folders here. So background textures, if you go inside, there are uh, a few different layers. So paint texture, I'll just zoom out a bit. 
If I turn that on and off, you can see that there, it's a very subtle um, paint splatter texture that's sort of scattered everywhere. You can adjust the opacity of this one, okay? Uh, embossed texture, by default that is turned off. Now if I just zoom in a bit here, and if I turn that on, you can see that it adds an embossing texture uh, over the entire background. Okay, you might like that look, so just turn that on if you want to use it. Uh, again, look at the opacity. If I try it to 100, <coughs> um, you can see the effect is much more prominent. Zero. So I'll turn that off. Uh, grit Texture 1 is one uh, I like to experiment with the most in this folder. If I start dragging the opacity that up, you can see that uh, that texture is quite prominent. If I bring it to zero, you see it creates an entire different look. So as you drag it up, it brings in a lot of white, a strong white texture into the background. So you definitely want to play around with that. Also try rotating it as well. So you can go edit, <coughs> excuse me, transform, uh, flip horizontal, or you could flip it vertically. Okay. So you can remember you're not restricted to the default look of um, the result of the action. Uh, you can jump into these layers and you can really customize uh, the look of it. Uh, grit texture 224, again, just play around with the opacity. You can see that one's 25%, uh, 15%. If I start dragging that up, you can see that again, that adds a lot more grit into the background. All right, uh, so that's that. Background detail sketch. Now, if I turn that on and off, you're not going to see much happen here. But the way this folder works, uh, sorry, the way this layer works is that it will outline any details in the background with like a very subtle, uh, like a pencil stroke. So say if there were mountains and trees in the background here, you'll see a really light sketch um, of those details in the background. So that's uh, with this uh, background detail sketch layer. Okay. Uh, background color, you just double click in this box <coughs> and just um, if you want gray, you can drag it to there. Uh, if you want a blue, okay, so there's a few different ways you can change the color. Um, but don't forget to, you know, always be jumping back into this color options folder and experimenting with different colors, okay. Uh, that one looks pretty cool, but I think I like 14. Leave it at that. Okay, uh, that's as simple as it is to use. And what I'm going to do now is uh, open up that next example and we're going to import some background textures and uh, I'll show you a way to add some text to the design. All right, so in this example, we're going to be taking uh, this photo here and rebuilding uh, this design here, okay? So let's get this file set up. So what I'm going to do first is hit W, grab my one tool. Now because my subject's uh, against a white background, it's going to be easy to select. So I'll just click over the white background. I'm going to hold down shift to increase my selection. Just grab these, this bit under here and under here. Uh, now I need to invert that selection. So Control shift I or Command shift I. Uh, now I need to create a new layer. You go to layer, new layer or shift control or command N. Must be called brush. And I'm going to fill in my uh, selection, alt backspace or option backspace. Okay, you can see that it's um, stuffed up uh, making the selection through here. So I'm just going to hide uh, that layer and hit, hit P, grab the pen tool. I'm going to quickly, whoops, my selection there. Fill that in. Fill that in. Uh, I won't really worry about these details here. It um, shouldn't matter too much. Maybe I'll just grab this there. Oops. Oh, that'll do. Okay. So I've got all that set up, uh, like the actions panel, and I'm just going to click play. Now make sure uh, before you run the action that your brush opacity is set to 100%. That's very important. So uh, just hit B before you run the action and 
uh, double check your opacity is at 100%. So I'm going to click play and let me just jump forward to the result. Okay, so here's the result. I'm just going to collapse the actions panel. Control Alt or Command Option and click on the vintage folder arrow that will collapse all the folders. Zoom in a bit here. So you can see how the textures really cut into my subject's arms and a little bit onto his face. So this is a better example to show uh, the reveal normal photo brush mask layer. So if I select that mask, I'll hit B, right click and grab uh, this textured brush. If I start brushing white into there, you can see how I can bring back more detail in my subject. So, so I'm doing that. So you can see how his face is cut off. Um, start brushing there, it just brings back those details. I'll just bring back a little bit of detail here. Okay, now the first thing I want to do is just have a quick experiment with the colors. So you can see in this design here, the, the colors are quite different. So I'm going to jump into the color options and just experiment with some of these. I'm just going to use a little bit of that, so I'm just going to hit 3 on the keyboard to use a bit of that uh, color option. Uh, I'll use that. I'll just use a little bit of that one. I think this one looks good. So I'll keep that. Okay. Um, now I also noticed in this design that I brought back some of the original color of my subject. So I'm going to jump to the reveal original color layer and just going to bring back some of the original color here. Okay. Uh, edge lines. Let's take a look. I'll turn them all off and turn them on one by one. The whites look good. We'll try the large ones. Don't work too well with this photo, so I'll keep that off. And I'll turn, I'll leave the black, leave the black lines on. Okay, I'm just going to jump to the background textures folder and just play around with the opacity of this grip uh, one texture layer. Just turn it up a little bit. Um, I'm just going to try and rotate these around so you can go to edit, uh, transform, flip horizontal or vertically. So I'm just using the shortcuts to check that out. I think it looks good here. I'm going to just turn up grit 2, take a look at that. Nope, paint texture. Turn that up a bit. Okay, looking good. So what I want to do now is import this city uh, photo here and put that in the background. <coughs> so to do that, I want to put it right at the bottom of the um, of the layer order here because I want all these textures to sit on top um, of that city image. So what I need to do is go to File, uh, Place Embedded and I've got this city image here. So let's double click on that and it will then appear in the design. And you can see that it's got this box around it um, so we can transform the scale. So I'm just going to scale that up and move this up the top here. Now there's a few things I want to do here. I'm just going to scale up a little bit more. Okay, so what I need to do here is we've got this hard line here and I want to smooth that out quite a bit. So I'm going to apply a mask to this layer. So click on this mask icon. And I'm going to hit G, grab my gradient tool. Okay, and uh, make sure the gradient is set going from black to white. And I'm just going to drag a line up here. And so what that's just going to do is, in the mask, it's created a smooth blend between um, not showing the photo, which is black, to revealing the photo, which is white. Okay, so we've got rid of that line. Now, what I want to do is rasterize this layer. I'm happy with the scale, so I don't need to play around um, scaling this up and down anymore. So if I right click and go to rasterize layer, um, I can now make some additional changes to this. So if I just hit Control Shift U or Command Shift U, that will desaturate, remove all the colors from our city image. 
Now, I don't want this big building in the middle here. I think it's a bit distracting. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just hit S, okay, which is the clone stamp tool. And all I'm gonna do is, um, using the left and right square brackets, I can adjust the size of my sample area. Let's hold down Alter Option, I'm gonna click over here in the sky, and just start, um, Alt, click, and just, just remove that building, okay? So that's much better, it was just a bit distracting. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. You can also play around with the blend modes. So you can go to overlay or soft light uh, or multiple. Uh, but normal, I think, looks pretty good. I'm just going to lower the opacity down a little bit and bring that maybe up a little bit higher. So just get a little hint of the buildings. Now, uh, what I also did with this one, it's very subtle but I imported a cloud texture. So I'm just gonna go to that process again, file, place embedded, and I've got this cloud texture down the bottom here. Okay, so I'm just gonna scale that up a bit. I'm just gonna use the shortcuts to flip that horizontal. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna apply a mask, and again, I'm just gonna hit G, grab my uh, gradient tool, and just mask out those, those lines. Flip this horizontal again. Looks pretty good. I like the blue that it's brought in as well, so I might, uh, might keep that. Um, I'll try experiment with these blend modes. Just try hard light. You might just keep it normal. Uh, zoom out. Now the next texture I brought in was a, uh, a road texture, which is down the bottom here, you can just see. So I'm just going to import that, file, place embedded, this one. So I'm just going to scale this up and just move that down the bottom here. I'm going to apply a mask and gradient tool, G on the keyboard, I'm just going to mask all that out. Or you could also do is hit B, right click, grab this soft brush and just brush away, whoops, brush away any details you don't want. What I also, also do is you can see a lot of the background texture is seen on top of the road here. So I can just brush away on this background textures folder mask to hide that. So rather than brushing with 100% opacity, I'm just going to hit 5 on the keyboard. That'll change the opacity of the brush. And it's going to brush that away. So, uh, and what you can also do when you when you brush into a mask, you can double click on it and adjust uh, the density of where you brush. So if I drag it to zero, um, I've basically hidden where I've brushed. 100% is the changes that I made. So you can go somewhere in between. So you just have a little hint of texture still come through. Uh, this clouds, I'm just going to lower a little bit. Okay, looking good. I'm going to jump to this overall saturation layer. I'm just going to increase this saturation a bit, bring out these colors a bit more. And I'm just going to have a quick flick through some of these, some of these colors again. I think what I've got is looking pretty good, so I might just leave it. That one's not too bad. But we'll leave it for the moment. So the next thing I want to do is uh, I need to create some text. So I'm going to create the text right at the bottom here. So that way, again, all these textures sit on top of the text. Okay, so I'm just going to hit T, grab the text all out. The font line I'm going to use is Beavis New Regular. And it was, let me just look at the example. So we're going to go for a bit of an orange color here. So let me just change the color here to an orange. Okay, now if I just hit, uh, hit T and click anywhere over the canvas, we can begin typing. So I want uh, three words here, control. And I might actually create them on different layers. So I'm just gonna um, hit control D, control T, sorry, to scale that up. I'm going to make a copy of this layer by holding down Alt or Option, just dragging down. 
Now, if I hold down Shift, click, and then drag that text down, it will keep it in line with the font above. Uh, I can double click on this layer to, to then change the text. Control D, I'm just going to make a copy again. Game. So now what I want to do, you can see in this example here that they're all aligned evenly to the right. So I'm going to shift select these three text layers. And I'm just going to hit this align tool here, which is align right edges. So I'm going to click that, you'll see that all the these three layers are now aligned evenly to the right. Okay. Now I shift select those, I can move them around together, and I can also scale this up. Something like that, I can move this around. What I can also do is with these three selected, I can hold down um, control left square bracket, okay, control left square bracket, and that will move those three layers down the layer list. So you can then just experiment with, you know, just moving this up and seeing how um, how it changes as we move it through the layer order. So you can see there, I've just got it sitting underneath the edge lines layer. So you can see the edge lines coming through over the top of the text. But I want this to be down here. I think that looks looks really cool down here. And what you'd also do, if I just hit Control G to group those, and then Control J, I've made a copy of that text folder. Okay, now I can move that um, fold up the layer order, and you can see how the text is much more prominent here. But maybe I want to have a blend between these two. So what I can do is hold down Alt or Option and click on that layer mask. So by de when you when you hold down Alt or Option and click on that layer mask, it hides it by default. Instead of oh, if I just delete that layer mask and then just click on the layer mask here, see so it puts it in white. If I hold down older option and click on it, it puts it in black so it hides it. So now what I can do is I'll just grab my charcoal brush and I'll select the mask and uh, grab a white brush and I can just start brushing away to reveal. Uh, whoops, I'm going to change the passing of my brush to 100%. I can reveal what's ever in that folder. Okay. What you can also do if you shift select. Um, these three text layers and hit T, I can go back in then and actually change the color of that font. So you get a blend between, so you can see where I've used this mask to brush on um, the details in this folder. Okay. So I'm just going to hit 5 on the keyboard down to use 50% and pass through that folder. Now, if I go to my example, uh, we can see that we've got these large letters in the background. So what I'm going to do here is just uh, grab my group one folder. I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and I'm going to drag that up the top here. So I've just made a copy again uh, of that folder. Now if I hit Control or Command E, it will flatten that folder onto one layer. So everything that was in that folder is now on one layer. So now what I can do is zoom out, Control or Command minus, Control or Command T to scale it up, and I can scale it right up now, and then move this around. Okay, so I can move that somewhere like there. I'm going to zoom in, Control or Command zero. Uh, so if I grab my example, so I think what I did here, I've just changed the blend mode, so I'm just going to um, experiment with that. So I'm going to try overlay and soft light. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll go down from the top and just scroll down through these blend modes and just get an idea of um, basically which one looks the best. I don't mind overlay, I think, I think overlay looks pretty cool. I'm just going to play around with lowering this opacity a bit more. And what I can also do, because this uh, this text is now one layer, I can hit Control or Command U, which will bring up the hue and saturation, and I can just play around a little bit with the, um, the color. Okay.
just like that. Okay, so I think this is looking pretty good. I'm just going to play around quickly with the uh, brightness. Uh, the contrast, I'll check that out. Might remove all the contrast from this uh, design. Saturation's looking pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm just going to hide the vintage photo, so you can see there's uh, the original photo, and there's a um, design that I've built in really no time at all. Now, another thing you can play around with is if you uh, if you select the vintage folder, okay, and hold down Control Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E, what that does it merges the design onto one layer, so you can see I can move that around, okay. So what you can do from here is if you go to filter, camera raw filter, okay, we've got this uh, window here, I'm just going to scale this, alright, so this is where you can make some additional um, quick changes to your finished uh, design. So for example, if you look into the right hand side here, you've got this temperature control, so if I wanted a bit more warmer, I could drag that to the right, cool out to the left, um, get a different tint to it. That looks cool, adding a bit more green. So I'll keep that. I can play around with the brightness, uh, the exposure handle here, contrast. Okay, um, you can attack the highlights. So if some of your highlights are a bit blown out, you can drag this to the left, and sort of flatten them out. Um, I like to play around with clarity, which is a bit like sharpening. You know, so you drag that to the right. Another cool one, if you jump to the FX tab, you can play around with this post crop vignetting. Drag that to the left, <coughs> excuse me, and we'll add a vignette around around your design. So I'll use a little bit of that. You can jump to this one here called Detail, add a little bit of sharpening. Uh, click OK. And if I just hide so you can see the before and after there. So I'm just going to group these. And there's the before. And there's the after. Now one last thing I forgot to cover was this other action included uh, in this vintage folder. It's called Oil Paint Finish. I've included this in other actions before. And basically all it will do, it will add a very subtle oil paint effect over your entire design. Okay, so in the way it works is that you can have any layer selected. It doesn't matter. Um, just select the... Action, click play, it'll take just a few seconds. Okay, it's finished. Uh, you can see it creates a, uh, a folder at the very top of the lay order called Oil Paint Finish. Okay, now if I zoom right in on this 100%, you can see it adds this very um, subtle oil paint effect over your entire design which will give it a slight smoothing effect. So uh, just play the action after you finish making all the changes to the layer, uh, to the layers. Um, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Know, just delete it if you don't want it. So there's two uh, layers in this folder. This one is called Add Sharpening Opacity. If I turn that on and off, you probably won't see it as I do that, um, but it just adds a little bit of sharpening to, your, to the oil paint finish. Uh, this layer here is a snapshot of your entire design with the oil paint effect applied to it. So as I turn it on and off there, you can see uh, with it off, you can see it's much more gritty. When I turn it on, it sort of smooths everything out a bit more. Okay? So if you don't want to, just delete the folder and you're back to the original. All right, so that's it. Uh, as you can see, the action is very simple to use, a lot of fun to use. You can come up with some really cool results. Uh, if you're stuck with the effect, just uh, send me a message and I'll help you out. If not, have a good time using the action. Thanks.